In the early 2000s, a group of researchers set out to test over 600 different supplements from over 200 different brands and from 13 different countries. They uncovered something sinister. Around 15% of the supplements tested contained anabolic steroids. Jorn, could you give a brief introduction as to your research interests? Anything exercise and nutrition metabolism, and then within that category, primarily, at least most of my work has focused on protein metabolism. It's starting to get kind of outdated, but in one of my uh, lectures, I have a, a slide from a study where it looked at the steroid contamination in commercial supplements, and uh, the Netherlands is at the number one spot. 25%, so if you want to be anabolic, if you want to know why all the Dutch people are 6'4", like me, we're cheating. But yeah, that's a crazy number, 25%. Uh, and that's that's just a steroid compound. Eh? God knows what, el what other stuff they put. Uh... Fortunately, there are things you can do to avoid these supplements, and I'll tell you how to by the end of this video. Steroids aren't the only thing that contaminate your supplements. Banned stimulants are also common in pre-workout supplements. Even as recently as 2017, Yunin colleagues tested 110 different pre-workout supplements and found that around 10% of them contained amphetamine and amphetamine-like substances, which are prohibited by the World Anti-Doping Agency. You see, unlike medical or pharmaceutical drugs, which the FDA tightly regulates, supplements are only regulated after being released to the market and only after adverse events are reported by consumers or after a claim is made around the supplement's ingredients being inaccurate. For pharmaceutical drugs to be approved for sale, several years of intense clinical research are required, including mechanistic or in vitro studies, animal and human trials. Unfortunately, the same people that tend to mistrust the pharmaceutical industry typically aren't aware of the much looser safety and regulatory standards in the supplement industry. As a result, consuming contaminated supplements is much more common than you might realize. While the excuse of, I didn't know my pro workout contained Tren, that some athletes have used can strike you as amusing, supplement contamination is a real issue. In fact, in a study by Lauritsen from 2022, a whopping 26% of athletes who got popped for a banned substance claimed it was because of their supplements, whether they're being truthful or not. Even if you're not an athlete who's concerned with remaining natural and passing drug tests, anabolic steroids aren't exactly healthy. But how does supplement contamination occur? How do supplements end up containing steroids or banned stimulants? Are supplement companies intentionally spiking your products to boost their profit margins? Well, we don't quite know. What's your stance on the danger or risk with contamination of supplements and how would you go about minimizing risk? I would say that, uh, like, I, I, I know quite a lot of people in the uh, food and supplement industry. Yes, it occasionally happens that some, let's call it hardcore brand, just spikes their supplement intentionally with something because then people make better gains. And by the time the FDA is onto them, they've just cashed out anyway. But that is very minor. It's just that all these products are often made in factories that make whatever request for supplements, uh, including pharmaceutical agents. So there's just a lot of cross contamination. It's not necessarily intentional. Unfortunately, there are many steps in the supplement manufacturing process that could cause cross contamination, making it difficult to pinpoint the cause. In fact, if you think the supplement industry is intentionally being nefarious, keep in mind that contamination can occur even before the supplement company ever lays hands on the raw materials as could be the case when purchasing whey from the dairy industry, for example. A couple of common causes include insufficient cleaning of either the containers used for transporting or the containers used to store the raw materials. Especially with multi-ingredient supplements, the supply chain is complex and often involves buying wholesale from other companies, multiplying the risk of cross-contamination. While there are regulations in place to improve these practices, called good manufacturing practices, or GMP in short, these regulations aren't strictly enforced, and previous research has estimated that over 70% of supplement companies fail to achieve the GMP standard. Some research suggests that bigger companies with more employees and overall revenue tend to adhere to GMP standards more frequently, but this is far from the best metric to use to make sure your supplements aren't contaminated. 
Unfortunately, many supplement companies just aren't doing everything they can to minimize the likelihood of contamination, making dietary supplements potentially hazardous. Fortunately, there are things you can do to minimize the health risk while still getting the benefits of supplementation. First, realize that supplements are meant to be supplemental to your diet. A healthy, nutritious diet won't require too many supplements. By consuming a healthy diet and minimizing how many supplements you need to take, you drastically reduce the risk of consuming prohibited substances. In line with that, stick only to the supplements that have plenty of evidence behind them. Every time you add a new supplement to your protocol, you're multiplying the risk of consuming a contaminated supplement. Plus, most supplements don't actually help you be healthier or build more muscle. The only muscle building supplements I would recommend at this point are caffeine, creatine monohydrate, protein powder, and citrulline malate. For health, the only supplements I would recommend are vitamin D and omega-3s. I'll put up some recommendations on how to take these on the screen. Ideally, to minimize your risk, buy these as single ingredient supplements. This will help lower the risk of contamination too. Other supplements simply don't have the same amount of research backing them for improving your performance and your health, so I'd personally stay away. The cost to your wallet and the potential risk of contamination just don't outweigh the potential benefit. Besides minimizing the number of supplements you take and purchasing single ingredient supplements, what else can you do to avoid risking your health? As I mentioned earlier, looking for supplements by bigger mainstream supplement companies may help slightly as they tend to have better manufacturing practices. Not to name names, but I've even refused sponsorships by smaller supplement companies because of the lack of transparency in their manufacturing practices. Instead, I exclusively endorse things I believe in wholeheartedly, like MyOdapt. MyOdapt is the best training app out there, soon to be on the market. It's a scientific coach in your pocket that individualizes training to you as an individual. It even accounts for your injuries and modifies training to ease you back into hard training as you recover from your injury. Go to myodapt.com now and register your email to be notified when it launches. You'll receive an exclusive lifetime discount when it launches in the next few months. Another great way to reduce the likelihood of consuming contaminated supplements is to look for a third-party testing label. Third-party testing involves an independent laboratory assessing the purity, quality, safety, and accuracy of a supplement's contents. Supplement companies generally need to pay for this to happen, as it boosts their credibility and marketability, which is why bigger companies tend to do this more frequently. I, d I don't know how this is in, say, the US or in other countries, but at least in uh, the Netherlands, we have, for example, uh, Informed Sports, which is an organization funded by the government who uh, tests all kinds of supplements and you can literally see like, oh, if I buy anything from that batch number, uh, it's tested for contamination. So there's almost like by government agency, not well, by a government funded agency. So it's extremely unlikely that I run into issues. So our Olympic athletes can only use those kind of supplements, for example. So if you want to be safe, you would look up uh, a system uh, like that. So you can avoid it. Importantly, third party testing varies in terms of rigor, and different countries use different labels. When looking to buy a supplement, perform a quick Google search into the third-party tester. In the UK, Informed Sport is a good example. In the USA, the USADA recommends the NSF certified sport label for athletes. Other well-known seals include the Aegis Shield certification and the USF verified mark. Looking for these labels is very important and reduces the risk of consuming a potentially dangerous, contaminated product. Finally, be a late adopter. Supplements like HMB and deaspartic acid for muscle growth had a lot of hype based on a couple of studies, but those studies largely failed to replicate. It truly is a tale as old as time. Since supplementation has the potential to do more harm than good, wait until at least half a dozen or a dozen studies are out and published on a supplement's effectiveness with consistent results before considering using it. As promised earlier, here's the summary on how to stay safe. First, focus on the supplements that have plenty of evidence behind them, like creatine monohydrate, caffeine, citrulline malate, vitamin D, and omega-3s. Second, look for single ingredient supplements. Third, 
try to look for bigger companies that market their good manufacturing practices. Fourth, look for a third-party testing label and do a Google search into its reputability. Fifth, when it comes to supplementation, which has the potential to do more harm than good, be a late adopter. Many supplements have promising early research, but the hype fizzles out. On the topic of hype, I think Rascal Apparel doesn't get nearly enough. The slickest, nicest, most durable, and comfortable gym clothing in the game. Go to rascalapparel.com and use code WOLF at checkout for 10% off and to support me in the process. Jorn, you absolutely killed it. You put out some of the most interesting research consistently. You even have some active social media where you consistently communicate it. Where can people find you, your lab, your research, everything? On most social media, I, uh, I post under Nutrition Tactics. Uh, don't worry, there's an occasional exercise study in there as well. So Nutrition Tactics on most platforms, and from there you can, uh, you can find most of my uh, stuff. But I want to hear from you in the comments below. Is there anything you do to avoid contaminated supplements? Dr. Mile Wolf, staying safe in your supplement use. Until next time.